Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, Season 0.25, Episode 1. We are deeply steeped into career mode now, which means only one thing. Space planes. Space planes. And more space planes. Or typically just this one space plane. Because uh, this is my medium duty, uh, medium orbit haul vehicle. It's proven reliable and kind of awesome, and unlike most of my space planes, it actually looks pretty cool. So, we're going with it, and uh, we just did our jump climb to about 11,000 meters, and throttle's punched, so now we're going to level it out just a little bit. Um, really, since the air is good here and these jet engines work so well at these higher altitudes, we just want to use this to get as much speed as we can to uh, make our jump into orbit. And yeah, now we're getting a lot of those uh, really cool shockwave effects. That's just pretty. We'll just uh, lay on the throttle and try to hold this angle. I don't know where this little wibbly wobbly is coming from. It's done this since I started playing with it. It's uh, probably SAS going a little crazy, but I'm entirely too chicken shit to try to turn it off. So we're just going to hope that the average is still with us climbing. Oh yes, and now the cool stuff. Here's the light show. This is the f really fun part about SSTOs. Really high powered aircraft in general is this awesome, awesome heating effect. And so. Um, I guess we'll talk for a second on my extended break. Uh, I had a life to live. I, I don't make apologies for that. Um, but I, because Kerbals was updated like four times since uh, our last uploads, I've kind of abandoned that entire save game. It, uh, it doesn't even exist anymore, so I couldn't even go back and recover it. If I really wanted to. Um, it's been a little convoluted and complex, and I recorded a lot of things. None of them went very well. Many people died. And it was a horrible, horrible tragedy. That Dune mission ended up actually being kind of cool, but um, there were some bugs with uh, Kerbal Attachment System that rendered my Kerbal Knots as debris. It made them particularly useless in doing things like science or getting back into the spaceship, which is terrible. So anyway, on our new save game, I've gone a little more minimalist. Um, this aircraft is actually 100% stock parts. Yeah, amazing, right? Um, I think the only parts mods I have on here are Infernal Robotics and Remote Tech. So I really wanted to do a Remote Tech game because I, I just enjoy the challenge and I'm not cool enough to do the RSS mods. But uh, now that Remote Tech is patched and working, and working well, um, I've started playing around with it and doing some cool things. And this mission is actually a kind of an upgrade to our current satellite network. Because uh, we have just unlocked um, Giga Range antennas. Okay. There's our switch over from air breathing to liquid ox engine. Yes, it's that tiny little motor, but when you're this high and this fast already, you don't need a whole lot of oomph to just keep going. So, we just now need to maintain our angle of attack. And just uh, let the speed wash over you. You sound creepy enough? I'm trying. Really, I'm trying. Yeah, so, um, the old game, the old season is, is gone. And I think I'm going to have way more fun with this season anyway. Um, want more options as far as things that I can do and cool stuff that I want to. The new improvements to the economy system, uh, which I have also included the fact are the mode where you have to buy parts uh, initially. So it's not just enough to get science to unlock them, you have to have the money to unlock them also which makes space planes even more useful because you don't waste a bunch of money just dumping rocket stages and for bringing smaller things into orbit we're really doing uh, missions closer to Kerbin even to the moon or Minmus space planes are invaluable 
All right, make our orbital insertion burn here. Well, such a little motor. That guy does so much work. But in reality, the plane is not very heavy, considering if it were a uh, traditional liquid-propelled rocket. All right. Here's our cargo. Uh, two satellites with very long-range communication. We don't have docking ports yet, so we're left to just eject them and hope that they don't explode. So, all right, we'll just angle this little guy up, give him a quick little kick, and get his panels out before that massive battery dies. Oh, I do have tweak scale on, which explains the ridiculous battery. And there's remote tech bringing our antennas. Uh, oh, man. That sound is horrible. Those remote tech motors just... Oh, man. Okay. I should have enabled a lock grouping onto the action groups menu, but I didn't. All right, well, let's try to get this deployment part done as quickly as possible. We're going to put him in our outer ring. So you can see some of my satellites have drifted from their intended orbit, and we're getting satellite clumping. But the outer ring still has its original three. And it looks like they're pretty well in place. This guy is going to end up entirely too close to that one. We're going to open up his orbit just a little bit. Alright. And... That seems good. This way, after an orbit or two, he should... Well, looks like one orbit. He's going to be in place to... Uh, jump on a spot here in the wheel. Well, he's going to be a little close, but he's still got line of sight on both of them. And the two satellites next to him, I should say. So that should be all right. All right. Let's do the last systems check. Man, that noise is... Oh. Can we just pretend that's like communicator noise or something? Uh, I apologize for that. All right. Um, okay. Well, these antennas that we don't need to be on right now, I can't turn off because they're inside the girder. All right. Well, let's get our other guy out of the bay here. I apologize for this being at night. We'll just dip this down. And we can get lots of cool silhouettes. All right. Antennas are fired up. Decoupled, angle them out of the bay, and just a little kick. Boop, boop. All right, get the panels out, and get the end. Oh, yeah, that noise is infernal robotics. I just bound an action key to the uh, move plus group and the move minus group. I guess uh, I should have bound one to lock. And maybe that noise would stop because that is. Probably the most annoying sound I have ever heard in my entire life. Uh, I'm going to try to mute that a little in post. Alright, well. Again, he's too close, so we're going to have to give him an orbit. You know, maybe two or three orbits. Oh, too close. Just as close, but on the other side. Oh, we'll just... Eh, Alright. Still clear line of sight on the both of them. And I didn't... Like a genius, I didn't include a Kerbal Engineer. Oh, I guess that is a parts mod, because it has parts. So I have Kerbal Engineer on here. Did not include that on these satellites and should have. All right, now we just got to do a little balancing act here. There's a lot of fuel left on this guy. Like a lot. So we're going to try to get it uh, either on the center of mass or as forward as we can. That's going to make it a lot more stable when we're flying through the atmosphere, or at least give us the ability to keep our nose down should we have to throttle up. I mean, not that we want it to... It'll help us keep level. It'll help the, the wings be our control surfaces instead of uh, weight and thrust. If all your weight's behind your uh, center of lift, you're going to tumble. You, you want your center of mass to be just uh, 
ahead of your center of lift. And we're just gonna kind of aim to keep it that way. Oops. All right. That was a mistake. Great. All right. I'm gonna have to balance this out. Eh, not the tank I really wanted to pull it from, but okay. Not much we can do now. But uh, hopefully with most of it there under the wings, we'll be all right. But uh, KSP is just about in the right position. If we make our burn here, we'll just go ahead and bring uh, Bill and Jeb home. All right, and then make our deorbit burn here. Nice and gentle. It's good. KSP will be in the daylight, but it's really doing <laughs> doing landings at night is terrible. As you can tell, because by looking at this, it's just uh, it looks like a black screen. We'll try to get some silhouetteage going. And this is really a maneuver that's designed to slow down. Um, I had Ferrum Aerospace on here. It was giving me lots of trouble, so I switched to uh, NEAR, which no one likes to say near. You know, there's FAR, NEAR, near and far. Get it? I'm sure they do. But uh, I, I do like the near aerodynamics model. It's simple and basic. It works pretty well. All right. It was a good nighttime night show. And we're going to flare a little bit in hopes of being able to bring our speed down before we get all the way on top of KSP. And um, basically we just do this to try to use some of that air force to, or the force of the air to divert your energy into turning as opposed to, well what was that? Are there parts falling off my boat? Oh. We left an antenna in the cargo bay on, and I guess aerodynamics still affected in there, which is silly. Well, all right, I'm about on course, and in the daylight, it's beautiful. Right. Flare it out just a little bit more and try to bring some of this speed down. Kill off some of this ridiculous velocity before we get there. Nobody wants to make a landing at Mach 3. I don't think the gear is rated for that entirely. I'd be scared to even open it right now. I'll say if this were stock KSP, I mean, who cares? Gone all the way to orbit and back with my landing gear down before. That's always awesome. No, okay, it's not awesome. Whichever. Okay, temperature seems okay. We do have deadly re-entry installed, as always. Man, that just looks cool. Flare it up just a bit. Yeah, we're we're gonna overshoot. We are entirely too high and way too fast. Let's see how much flaring we can do. Because we have deadly reentry installed, we gotta be careful of our G. We can't pin these guys to 15 Gs forever and a day, like in totally stock KSP. Uh, they'll die, and that's bad. This is Bill and, Bill and Jeb we're talking about. The Immortal Three. Well, two thirds of the Immortal Three. It's all right. We're gonna try to bleed off some of this speed just basically by flying in an S curve instead of a straight line. All right. And down below Mach something three maybe. All right. So we're just going to bleed off as much of this speed as we can. I was hoping to just glide this in, but it looks like we're going to need some engines. Just a little bit. I mean, we've got just gobs of fuel. We could probably go back to orbit if we wanted to. Alright, so let's start to get ourselves set up for landing here. <laughs> Okay, uh, we might be a bit too nose heavy. I'm gonna pump some of this oxidizer to the back. 
Uh, that seems to be all right. All right. Let's start to get ourselves actually lined up for a runway now. We're in close enough. All those pretty trees. Okay. We're serious now. Uh, one undercarriage down and locked. Okay, rate of descent is acceptable. So let's just keep it pinned in there. All right, Jeb, you have the ball. Oop. Skirt. Brilliant. Oh, that's a that was near perfect, Jeb. Congratulations. All right, we're here. Recover. And uh, no science on this one, but uh, 80 some odd thousand, 85,000 cash back. That's because space planes are awesome. Join us next time.